Hi there, there were some questions regarding um, systems of equations with three variables, so three equations, three variables, and how to solve those. Um, these ones say specifically to solve by elimination, so we're going to do them um, by solving using elimination. Uh, we already did um, a few of them in class, and to be honest, I can't remember which ones we did, so I'm just going to go over um, a couple of them. Um, like, um, let's do number three. I think one of the students um, this week was asking me questions about number three. So the goal is you have to eliminate, use two of your equations to eliminate a variable and then use a different pair to eliminate that same variable. And by doing that, you go from systems that have three variables and we've eliminated it down to two different systems that have two variables. And once you have two systems with two variables, you can put those together and eliminate a variable, and then you know what one of your variables is equal to. So it's sort of um, a little bit of a, a domino effect of you have to get rid of one variable, and then you have to get rid of the second variable in order to, to really know one of your, what one variable is equal to. After you get that far, it's really simple. You just substitute them back in. So um, for number three here, um, I noticed really quickly that for the x's, they all have um, a coefficient of one, which really sets it up nicely um, for elimination. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, the two um, on the bottom, and I'm going to combine those two equations. Okay. So I'm going to do um, just adding down the columns using the signs that already exist. And if they don't have a sign in front of them, I just put a, a plus in that case. But um, these already have signs. So x minus x is going to um, add down the columns and give me, um, that will just eliminate away. Um, negative 3y plus 6y is going to be 3y. Negative 6z plus 3z will give me negative 3z. And 28 minus 7 will give me 21. So now I have I've combined the bottom two equations to make one equation that just has an, a y and a z in it. Now I need to do the similar process, but I can't use the same two equations. So uh, for this one, instead, I'm going to use... Um, the top two equations. If um, You could also use the bottom and the top. So you could use these two together or you could use these two together. Um, and for the sake of not having to multiply through by anything, I'm actually going to use the first and the third together to do the next one. So I'm going to do the same process. Um, if you want to rewrite it, you can in order to combine them um, what I'm just going to do for a second is um, I am going to, I guess I'll rewrite it. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to move it over if I know how to do that. Maybe I don't know how to do that. Oh, I think I can only do that if I wrote it out. Well, poop. Um, okay, so I'm going to take the top equation, which is x minus 4y minus 5z equals 21. And then I'm going to take the bottom equation, which is negative x plus 6y uh, plus 3z equals negative 7. And again, I could have used the, the first and the second equation. I would have just had to multiply one of them through by negative 1 so that one of the x's has a positive x and one of them has a negative x. And since these ones are already like that, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. So, um, I'm putting these two together. X minus X again goes away. Negative four Z plus, or sorry, negative four Y plus six Y is two Y. Negative five Z plus three Z is negative two Z. And 21 minus seven is going to be 14. So now I have two systems 
that just have a Y and a Z. And now I can put those together. Um, so um, I'm actually going to reduce them before I put them together. Um, that way I'm dealing with smaller things because I recognize that the system on the left is divisible by three on both sides. So I'm going to reduce that to make it a little easier. And I noticed that the system on the right is divisible by two. Okay, that way I'm just dealing with smaller stuff. So when I rewrite this, this guy is going to turn into, I'm just going to divide everything through by three. Three Y divided by three is just Y. Um, negative three Z divided by three is just negative Z. And 21 divided by 3 is just 7. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with this guy. Oop. Okay, um, if I divide 2y by 2, that's just y. Um, uh, negative 2z divided by 2 is just negative z. And 14 divided by 2 is just 7. Okay, so this should sort of be a red flag on this one. Um, because we ended up with two of the same equations. So if I were to flip all the signs on one of them, you're just going to end up with, um, with nothing left over. Okay, so um, we'll do that just in case. So I'm going to multiply everything through by a negative. So negative 1 times y is negative y. Negative 1 times negative z is positive z. And negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. If I were to eliminate those, then y minus y goes away. Negative z plus z is also going away. So you're left with 0 over here. And 7 minus 7 is just also 0. Okay, so in this case, ask yourself, does 0 equal 0? Yes, it does. And 0 always equals 0. So... For this system of equations, um, if you look at the answers down here, you should end up with infinitely many solutions, okay? And the reason that you end up with infinitely many for this is because of the fact that zero always equals zero. That's always going to be true. And when something is always true, it will end up with infinitely many. Versus if we had ended up with something that was like, negative 2 equals 1, while well, negative 2 doesn't actually equal 1, it never equals 1. So that would have been no solution in that case. That would mean that the lines are skew, that they never cross. Versus here, when I have 0 equals 0, that means that um, the, the lines are um, consistent dependent. They're going to be um, the same line throughout. Or in this case, with three equations, um, will have like planes um, that are created because it has an x, y, and z variable, therefore it's in three dimensions. So you might have one plane and then like another plane. I'm trying to think of how to draw this. Another plane that intersects it. Oh snap, I didn't know it does that. Well, that's cool another plane that intersects it, and, and then a, a third plane that intersects that. And so with all of the planes intersecting, they have to intersect along this one line, and that one line has infinitely many points in it. Um, so therefore, it has infinitely many solutions, because remember, your solutions are where they cross. Pretty cool stuff, right? Versus here, if we had something that was like no solution, no solution would mean that um, 